YouTube thought they could remove the dislike button, but I added it back. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about the journey I went on to bring the dislike button back to YouTube. Because recently YouTube removed the dislike count on videos, which sucks because if you're trying to find a tutorial and you wanna know if that tutorial is good or not, the dislike to like ratio is one of the best ways to know if the video is outdated or just bad information. And by removing that, they make learning much harder. So I decided to add the dislike button back so you can actually see the dislike to like ratio to know if a video is even worth watching. Now I'm not gonna lie, I thought this would be a fairly simple project when I first started it. I figured I'd just create a simple Google Chrome extension and I'm gonna be able to connect that to Firebase and do all the authentication because you know, Google owns both Firebase and Chrome so it should be easy to connect them. And then I can just, you know, get the dislike to like ratio and just save that in my database. I thought it would be easy, but that was far, far from the truth. In actuality, what happened is I just struggled and struggled to find out how to be able to stitch together all these different pieces while still making everything as seamless as possible. Because essentially, I wanted it to be as if the dislike button never changed. I didn't want you to have to like sign into a separate application. I just wanted all the sign in and everything to happen in the background. So you just click button and that's it. Everything works behind the scenes. And I feel like I mostly got that right, but there's a few little hiccups that I want to talk about. Now, the first hiccup I want to talk about is how I actually dealt with authenticating user accounts, because if I didn't have any authentication system, you could just click the dislike button as many times as you want, or you could just have like a bunch of spam requests sent to my server that just constantly increment the discount like, and that would be really, really bad because that would just be fraudulent and you wouldn't be able to know if a video was actually good or not. So what I ended up doing is I was able to essentially scrape the YouTube web page to find where they stored the IDs and information about the user on the web page. And I was able to pull that ID information out, which let me tell you was not easy. It's not very accessible, but I was able to pull that information out and I was able to use that information to send it along with all of my requests. So now if you're logged into one account and you dislike a video and you log into a different account and you dislike the same video, both those dislikes are going to show up. It's not tied to the extension. The dislikes are actually tied to your specific YouTube account, which is really, really important. By tying together these different pieces of information, I was able to make sure that no matter what account you're signed into, your dislike is going to be counted. And also if you're signed into an account on different computers, the exact same account, all the dislike information is shared between whatever computer you're on. The extension just stitches together all the information that YouTube already has publicly available to you. So that way you don't have to worry about, you know, if you're on one computer, the dislike information is different than another computer. It's all tied to your YouTube account and not to the actual extension itself. Now that I actually figured out user accounts, the next part I had to worry about was how I actually stored this information. And I ended up going with Firebase mostly because it's really simple. And while it can get expensive if I have tons of people download the extension, which by the way, download it, it's gonna be linked in the description below. I don't really worry about that too much because it could get expensive, but I doubt it's going to get enough widespread adoption to become an expensive problem. And if it does, I can hopefully just ask for a few donations here and there to cover the cost. So it's not something I'm super worried about at this moment. Worst case scenario, I could write my own backend and do my own database to make it cheaper. But for now, this was super easy and quick to get started with. And it was actually pretty nice working with Firebase. I just created a simple function to be able to increment or decrement the toggle of the dislikes. And I also created just a database to store the total dislikes for a video, as well as importantly, the amount of dislikes like for a particular user. So I tied your user account to the ID of the video. And I also just had an aggregate of all the counts of the videos that are being disliked. So if the video has been disliked 10 times, the count is going to say 10 in the database. And there'll be 10 individual records for the 10 people that disliked that video. I also am not too worried about price because this application in total does like one function request and it does maybe two or three reads every single time that you load your page. So that's really not that big of a effect. And one really interesting thing I did about this application is let's say that you previously disliked a video on YouTube. Well, my application has no way of knowing that because all the dislike information on YouTube has been completely deleted. Like it's impossible to view unless you're the owner of the video. So this kind of sucks because I can't query some API to get the old dislike information. All the dislike information has to be new information. But let's say you dislike the video and now you come back to that exact same video. Well, my extension is smart enough to see that you have disliked the video and see that you haven't disliked it in our application yet, and it'll add a dislike for you automatically so it stays synced up. This is really nice because whether or not you've disliked it or liked it, it's going to make sure to take that into account. And it's gonna say, hey, I see that you previously disliked this video. 
Our extension has no way to know that because YouTube removed all that information. So I'm gonna add a dislike to our database so that way it's going to show up for other users. This is something that was a little bit tricky to code up, but I'm really glad I got it working because now you can actually have the dislikes propagate for videos you've previously watched and already disliked. So you don't have to like re-dislike those videos as long as you just go to the watch page at least once. Now I mentioned how I don't have that old dislike information, which is a huge problem because pretty much every video in my extension has zero dislikes at the start because nobody's using the extension since I just released it. But I don't really think this is a huge problem because as time goes on, more new videos are going to be released and they're going to start with zero dislikes, just like my application has zero dislikes for them. And as more and more people use this extension, the actual dislike count is going to be pretty accurate to the total number of dislikes the video actually has. So if you know 10 people use my application, the dislike count is gonna be way off. But if a million people use it, the dislike count is going to be quite accurate because it's going to include so many more people. So as more time goes on and those older videos become less popular and newer videos become more popular, and as more and more people start using the extension, the fact that the old dislike counts aren't there isn't as big of a detriment as you would think. Now there are some extensions out there that are trying to bring back that old dislike information or maybe they queried it before it was removed. So if you want to check out one of those extensions, I would recommend it as well. But some of the problems that I've seen with them is they don't take into account like user accounts, which is a problem because it's really easy to fraudulently add dislikes to videos. And if you're on a different computer or you're using different accounts, it's tough because those dislike counts don't actually match up with your YouTube account, which is the most important thing I wanted to do with my application. And probably a thing that took me 95% of the development time was just making sure the user accounts worked properly. Now, another big problem I ran into was just dealing with Chrome extensions. Gosh, it is a nightmare to develop Chrome extensions because there's so many weird things you have to do. It's not really like normal JavaScript. Like it's hard to do normal JavaScript things in a Chrome extension. And the dev experience is kind of a nightmare because you have to constantly refresh the extension. Then you have to refresh the browser that you're on. And YouTube takes a while to load all the information. So every time I made a change, it would be like a five second process of refreshing everything to make sure the change would work. And then testing it side by side on like Firefox and Chrome. I mean, it was a nightmare to develop. So I really hated that about making this Chrome extension. I'm sure there's ways to make it better and more enjoyable to work on. But since this was just such a small project, I didn't really want to do a bunch of work beforehand on like tooling and stuff like that because I knew it was going to be a small project that I would work on for a small period of time. Now, another thing you're probably thinking is like, why did I even do this? Like, sure, there's other extensions out there that already do it, and maybe they have more data than mine or more user base than mine. But the main reason I wanted to do this was because it's something I'm passionate about. I think it's really important that the dislike ratio is there so that you can see, hey, is this video even worth watching? Because if it's not worth watching, you want to be able to skip it because some programming tutorials, they're like an hour long. And if you wait through an entire hour long video before you realize that it was just terrible, you wasted an hour of your life. And if you had that dislike ratio where it had, you know, 90 dislikes and 10 likes and you're like, well, this video is probably garbage. It'd be so much easier because you could just skip it and go to the next video, save an hour of time. And that is so useful. So that's why I wanted to bring this extension out. And I wanted to make it so that you could see the dislike to like ratio and make sure you skipped those crappy videos and stayed on with the good videos. So in parting, I have a bit of a challenge for you. I want you to download this extension and then I want you to dislike this video. I wanna see how many dislikes we can get on this video. I wanna see if we can get the dislike count on this video to be even larger than the like count on the video. Just spam the dislike on this video. I don't really care. It's not going to make any difference in my opinion, especially because it's not shown anymore. But I think it'd be a cool thing for people that actually download the extension. They can see how many dislikes are on this video or maybe go to like the YouTube rewind and dislike that because nobody liked that anyway. Just find a video, spam dislikes on it. I think it would be a fun project. Now, if you're interested in more devlog style content, I actually have a larger devlog on my careerfair.dev project. It's linked over here. And with that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.